Spirit. The Spirit of life. So because they had the Holy Spirit on the on the day of resurrection, they will be resurrected by the Holy Spirit that was in them. Who is the same Spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the dead. You see, that was that is the blueprint of salvation. The blueprint of salvation is this, that we believe in Jesus Christ, that we, we receive Jesus Christ, for, and we, we, we receive Jesus Christ and obey Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. And then God in turn, the Lord Jesus Christ in turn, will give us the gift of life, the gift of eternal life, which is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is life. So when a man receives the Holy Spirit, he has received life. And the Holy Spirit is eternal, the eternal Spirit of God. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive eternal life. The Lord give His Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. Acts 5.32 God gives His Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. You see? So we must read the scripture. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all the scripture, all going all, all the books of scripture going to, to Revelation and find out what the Lord is telling us, what is commanding us to do. So we can obey him because that's what he's asking us to do. He's asking us to obey his commands if we want to receive his Holy Spirit. So we must know his commands first to obey. We cannot obey what we don't if we don't know what he's telling us. So what he's telling us is clearly, clearly printed in his word, the word of truth, the Bible, so we know what God is telling us. And once we obey them, then we shall receive the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit, which will dwell in us and be with us forever and forevermore. That, my friend, my brothers and sisters, is eternal life. Eternal life is in obedience to the word of God. Eternal life is in obedience to the word of the Lord Jesus. Eternal life is more important than anything in this world. Eternal life is more important than money. Eternal life is more important than mentions. Eternal life is more important than the pride of this life. You see, the achievements of this life. Eternal life is more important than our selfish desires and our sinful desires. Eternal life is more important than anything, than any kind of life that we're living. Eternal life is more important. That's why Jesus says, our Lord and Savior says, what good is it? If a man gains the whole world, if he, a man gains the whole world and have a master key and access to the treasures of this world and have access to the banks of this world and have access to the, to the great banks of this world and is able to withdraw large sums of money and is able to find pleasure, find the best house, find the best scenery, the best place to live, find the best doctors, see, find the best uh, 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 place to go to school, find the best uh, 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 the best food, you see, the most expensive and uh, and, and the most expensive and and, 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 and uh, possessions, the most expensive food. What good is it if we have access to all these things and gain all these things, but in the end lose eternal life, lose the soul? It's no good. It's no good. It's no good because the one that loses his soul is in hell, in hellfire, in torment. That's, that's a long, that's everlasting torment. Not a torment that ends, it's, it's ongoing forever. So what good is it for any man to live in this world and have all the pleasures that they, they can have and all have all the things that they want to have or live a, a life that is considered to be a, a successful life, a success story, and also have a legacy, 
but in the end, lose the soul. What good is any of that? What good is anything in this world if in the end, the men lose the soul? That's why in the scripture, even the Lord even talks about, even, even mentioned the, 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 the spiritual power. Where even though spiritual power is good, what good is spiritual power if in the end a man is rejected by God? That's why in the script, that's why the most important thing in the body of Christ, the most important thing for a human being is and should always be to enter into the eternal rest of the eternal kingdom of God, where that man's soul will rest in peace and in joy and in gladness of heart. Forever and ever, where there will be no suffering, where there will be no sorrow, and where there will be no torment. You see? What good is anything, even spiritual power, if in the end a man loses his soul? What good is casting out devils, even though it is good? Because devils must be cast out for the people of God to be delivered. But what good is anything? What good is 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 anything, even spiritual power, if in the end the man loses soul. You see? So the Lord is trying to redirect our hearts to what really is important. He wants us to focus on what is the most important thing, which is our soul. That is exactly what the Lord came to do. And the spiritual power that he brings was to help us into salvation, was to help us to grow in the spirit. Not for us to be entangled again in sin. Not for us to, to, to be entangled again in the love of money and the love of this world. So when the Lord brought the anointing, the power of the Spirit, when the Lord brought the anointing, when the Lord brought the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, it was supposed to be used, the healing of the sick, the casting out of devils and everything. It was there, God give this anointing, this gift of the Spirit, God gives it for a purpose. And the purpose, the sole purpose, was always to lead the sheep to a safe pasture, to lead the people to the kingdom of heaven. That was the purpose of all these things. The purpose of casting out devils is to deliver the people from the devil's oppression, from the devil's control, is to deliver the people from sin. The purpose of healing the sick is to bring relief to the soul that is suffering with disease, is to bring, to, is to bring relief, to help those who are suffering, to give them peace and rest from the suffering, from the disease that they're suffering from. So Jesus, when he comes, he comes to he comes to give us, he comes to deliver us from every bondage, from every sort of bondage, which in the end is to, to take us to the kingdom of heaven, not to bring us back to this world again and to be entangled with the love of this world. Because to be entangled in the, into the love of this world is idolatry. That is what the Lord doesn't want his people to be in. Because once God's people, however, begin to fall in love with this world and the things of this world, then the love of the Father is no longer in them. Once a man begins to fall in love with money or riches or begin to fall in love with, with their achievements, or begin to fall in love with, with material wealth or treasures of this world, then that man have lost the way, have fallen out of the way. That man has fallen away from truth. That man has fallen, have been deceived. That man has fallen away from the path of life. So when you go to the book of First John, chapter 2, you can see the Lord speaking about this there. 1st John chapter 2 1st John chapter 2 What is this, what is said in 1st John chapter 2 
First John chapter two. First John chapter two. Verse verse fifteen. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. That means idolatry. If we do not love the Father, then that means we love something else. That means it's the love of this world. And the love of this world is idolatry. Idolatry. The love of this world or anything in this world is idolatry. Because they are the precise reasons why we find ourselves incapable of obeying the Lord. Idolatry is what keep a man or a woman from obeying God fully. From submitting totally to the authority of Christ Jesus. From submitting totally to the commands of Jesus Christ. Idolatry is the reason. Is the reason idolatry in the heart of a man is what can keep a man from obeying God. Because there's something that is within the heart of, 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 of the man that can hold them captive. This love of whatever that thing is will keep that man away from the Lord. Because the Lord says we cannot worship two. In other words, a man cannot be lukewarm. And enter the kingdom of heaven. A man cannot worship both God and money. A man cannot worship both God and this world. A man cannot love both the Lord and this world. And still manage to enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, repentance must take place there. There must be a repentance that takes place. There must be a change of mind. A change in our hearts that takes place. You see? We must decide... Who do we love? Who do we love? That's why in the scripture, in the book of Revelation, you see the Lord was telling them uh, to go back to their first love. Repent. Who do we love? Do we love... When we first came to Jesus Christ, we were on fire for God. You see? We were on fire for God. We loved the Lord. You see? The Lord was first in everything that we do. We were serious about sin. You see? Now, several years down the line, then that fire started to die out because of the love of this world, because of things in this world that has come in. The devil have used the, the, the things of this world to draw our attention, attention away from the Lord. So over time, the love of this world crept in into the hearts of men, into the hearts of those who were once faithful to the Lord, and now you start to see unfaithfulness to the Lord. Little by little, you start to see disobedience starts to appear in one way or another. In one command or another command, we start to break one command here, another command there. Those very, very command that we... We probably were obeying, then we start to obey, we start to break them. Because something has happened along the way. That the love of this world has somehow got in. You see? So, the Lord is telling us that we have to repent. That we have to go back to our first love. Which is the love of the Father. The love of the, the Lord. And repent from the love of this world. Because the love of this world doesn't have any life in it. has no life. It has no eternal life to promise us. The only thing it promises is death. You see? So there's nothing good in it. You see? There's nothing good in it in the end. You see? So the Bible, the, the Word of God is telling us that, that if any man love this world or anything in this world then the love of the Father is not in them. In other words, that man has idolatry. So we have to look at our hearts and check our hearts. Is there anything that we love here in this planet? What do we love here in this earth? And whatever that thing is, that could be the reason why we cannot find the Lord. 
That is the reason why we can seek the Lord and not find the Lord. Because when we seek God, you must always seek God with all your heart to find Him. So if our heart is to the Lord, part of our heart is to the Lord, and the other part of the heart is to this world, we can seek God and still not find Him. Because the first commandment, because of the first commandment, to not have no other gods before Him always holds. It, 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 it always will always hold from now, in the past, and all the way into the future. It will always hold forever because there's no other God. There's only one God. You see? So we can never have any other God before God. We can never have any other God before God and expect that when we seek Him, we will find Him. So that's why when somebody's seeking the Lord, they must always make sure that they separate themselves. Separate themselves from their normal activities. Cut off the television. Cut off the cell phone. Cut off even communication, if possible, with people. When it's, uh, cut that off. And then set yourself apart from this world. Find a place where you can set yourself apart from this world and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord for as many days as you can, as is possible. Or as, as, as your heart has, 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 has led you to, as the Lord has led you. And then seek the Lord for as many days as possible. Then in so doing, you will find God. You will find the Lord. You will find the Lord because why? Because you have put Him first. Because you have come, you have put Him first. You have put the love of the Father first above the love of this world. You see? So the scripture says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, she is telling you what every, what the, what, what's in the world. He's telling you, uh, for everything in the world, the loss of the flesh, that's in the world. The loss of the flesh is sinful desires from the human nature. Sinful desires that every human being has. The desires to commit sin, to do evil, that comes from the world. You see? He's, the scripture says, for everything in the, the world, the loss of the flesh, the sinful desires of the flesh is in the world. The loss of the eyes, that's in the world. The loss of the eyes is, 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 it could be different things. Men lusting after women or vice versa. That's the loss of the eyes. Men or women lusting after nice cars. You see? Lusting after uh, uh, different possessions that other people have or things that they see in this world. You know? And then as a result, instead of focusing on the Lord and relying on the Lord, you know, for the provision or focusing on the kingdom of heaven, then that can change their focus from seeking God to beginning to seeking the world. And then, and then once, once they start to seek the world, then they start to have worries because that's what, that's what we were reading from before. When people start to seek the world, then they begin to have worries. They begin to lose peace, you see, because they're seeking the world. But once you start to, start to seek the Lord and your heart is not on this world, then that's when you will start to have peace. You see, because in Christ Jesus there is peace. He said, in Jesus Christ there is peace. But in this world there is no peace. There is no peace in this world because nothing in this world is, is stable. Nothing in this world is, is, is really true. You see, because it's going to be one day, one day it is and the next day is destroyed. You see, there's no real assurance in anything in this world, in anything in this world. You know, that's why we cannot put our faith in our possessions. Our possessions cannot save us. They're not our saviors. We only have one savior, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and died for our sins. Our money did not die for us on the cross. You see, our house did not die for us on the cross. Our cars did not die for us on the cross. You see, nothing or nobody in this world came and died for us on the cross. It was only God that came and died for us on the cross. In the Son. He came in the Son. The Lord Jesus Christ and died for us on the cross. 
to save us, to save us from from the sinful nature that we were born into. He came and died so we can be saved from this world, from the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and everything else that is in this world that is leading men to hell and not to God. So you see here it says, for everything in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. You see? Also he's mentioning the pride of life. And he says, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the pride of life, you know what it is. Is men priding themselves over their achievements. Men priding themselves over their intelligence. Men priding themselves over their uh, accomplishments. Their success. You know? Men priding themselves over over their natural abilities men priding themselves over anything that is that 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 men value in this world you see and then when they and then those things they receive honor from men about the lord says the following he says these things come from the world you see they come from the world and he says the world and its desires pass away but whoever does the will of God lives forever. You see the world and its desires, the lustful desires, the lust of the eyes, the pride of this life, the lust of the flesh. He says they will one day pass away. But he who does the will of the Father, he who has the love of the Father in him, will live forever. He who obeys the Father will live forever. This is the conclusion of today's message. May the Lord bless you again. And Shalom.